Welcome everyone to the Adversity to Advantage podcast. I'm very excited after much uh, sort of deliberation and back and forth because of our busy schedules. I've got Sean Winfield, who is the founder of Co Startup and Go, uh, which is an amazing, unique, and dynamic startup support company. Welcome to the show, Sean. Hi. Hi. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, so we've done we've done a bit of work together in the past. I say work together. Uh, uh, Sean did some uh, business coaching with me for uh, last year when I was feeling a little bit sort of overwhelmed with all the good stuff. It was all good stuff, but I was like, help me. I don't know what, what I'm doing wrong or I had so much self-doubt. Um, and uh, it was so amazing to work with you. So I knew I had to have you on the show because um, you've kind of transformed the way I work. Uh, and it's given me this, uh, and as much as I saw myself as like an organized human, um, I think I was just a bit overwhelmed in the newness of it all. And you really helped me just get a new perspective and, and create some structure around, you know, what it was I was doing and, and connect, reconnecting to my why. So I, I will always appreciate you for that. Um, so tell, tell us a little bit about Co Startup and Go. Like what, what, what made you start it? What are you passionate about? Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, it's a, Co Startup and Go started around three and a half years ago. So my background is predominantly in operations, I'd say roughly around the last 20 years. And um, I found myself towards the end of that period working um, within startups a lot in more of a sort of a formal role from the, at the very early stages. You know, the people who come in and there's only a few people there and they get it all set up, up and running until it's on its feet and, uh, you know, strong revenue streams, etc. And I found myself going into startups, doing this work, and then the startup was on its feet, up and running, and then I was kind of out of a role then what I, yeah <laughs> so that you know they they were up and running and doing their thing and and i had sort of finished the the lifespan of where i was probably adding value um and i found myself doing this a, a fair few times and enjoying the process but then thinking oh hey ho okay i have to go and get another role uh inverted commerce so to speak and yeah. i i it was um i think it was sort of about the fourth or fifth time that i that, that i done this and i was i was sitting in a, a, a co-working space and Sort of tapping my fingers thinking okay well right all right so what am I going to do well I looked around and there was lots of individual entrepreneurs and small startups just sitting there doing their thing and I thought all of these guys firstly could do with someone who can come in and help them hit the ground running and organize both them and the startup and, and take it forward um and also I thought, well, this is these are the guys that I'm excited to work with. The really early mm. stages, these really inspiring ideas, and you know, getting involved with people who don't necessarily have the big budget funding, but actually have some of the most exciting ideas. So it was at that actual point that I thought, right, that's what I'm going to do. So um, I started working for myself, sort of offering, you know, the the, the services that I do, which is sort of top level strategy operations, um, getting people, the startup off the ground from either an idea or lots of ideas, streamlining that down to go, okay, what is practical and what actually works and what could be done to people who already, you know, have a few, few ideas and it's, it's up and running and they want to take it to the next level and grow their team and find some direction. And I was also working, um, also working uh, with, uh, uh, as we directly with founders and CEOs to help streamline what they're actually doing and make it really laser focused and a really great use of their time. So yeah, that kind of where the idea started just organically, like, yeah, I want to do this as a sort of extension of my career. Um, I absolutely love it. Three and a half years in, we've worked with, you know, good old 50, 50 odd startups and some wonderful founders and joined people on some really exciting journeys. So that's where it started. And, and that's where we are and today. And here we are. Would you yes. say that you've always had the entrepreneurial kind of edge? I feel like I don't know. Is that are the are entrepreneurs born or made? What was that? What was that bit well, of your story? I think I interestingly <clears throat> because um, my father was a was an I had an entrepreneurial okay. spirit. While he was a stockbroker, he set up his own company after that, and as was my grandmother, I think as well. In in in, in Wales, she set up a company there. Bless her. So there's something. I think there is something in the genes. Mm. Um, I myself, when I was younger, would always think of. You know, I'd write whole business plans when I was really young and to, I'm going to set up a cafe and it's going to do this really? and, that, you know, this sort of thing. And then I, I think, yeah, it was about 25 years ago when I was in the fitness industry for five years. And I was, um, I ended up being a really independent um, uh, personal trainer and taught classes to all the gyms in the city and built up a client base and worked for myself for those five years. So I think you you are right. I think, I think it is in the genes a little bit, but I also think you can you can release an entrepreneur in you if you allow yourself to 
to, to be more inquisitive about what you can do for yourself rather than for other people, I think as well. Because it is a I, mindset, isn't it? Like yeah. a, it's a way of yeah. thinking and a way of holding risk, I guess, like yeah. that kind of bravery. Like, I don't know, what are the things that you've seen yeah. make up an entrepreneur? Well, I, yeah, I think it is being thinking of new ideas or, or finding something very exciting and want to, to explore it more. Um, I think it doesn't, you don't, aren't necessarily born, born with all the traits you need to succeed as an entrepreneur, but That's I true. think you have to have the, the inquisitiveness and the excitement about something to at least start to explore it. And then you will grow from there. It's almost like the, a restlessness and a curiosity. Yeah. Cause even yeah. the times that I haven't worked, this is the first time I fully worked for myself and been like thinking of scaling a business, but I've always had a side hustle. I've always yeah. had a day job and I've been working yeah. on something on the side. So I think there's something in that, like you, the work is important and exciting. Yeah, I agree. And then also you, I think there's a bit of sort of survivalist in it, sort of making things happen for yourself. I, I, I've done similar. I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a single parent and I've looked after my son since just, just on my own since about six months. And since then, and actually I still do this today. We've sold, I've, I've, I've had an, I sold his old things on eBay and kept, you know, doing little bits and pieces that keeps us going. And, 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 and yeah, I think there's a, there's, it's, there's a natural sort of in, inbuilt entrepreneurialism, but I think, yeah, you can also grow and develop it as well. And, and I guess you also have to um, be able to deal with challenges in a way that's useful. So you almost rise to the challenge or create a mindset around what that means for you. But I think some of that is learnt over time. And so you've given us a little bit of insight into you know, sort of a father and grandmother and that sort of entrepreneurial vibe. What else was it in your childhood? Do you think you um, experienced challenges there yourself or was it just you had great curiosity and open mindedness like what was what were those early years like for you um I think um I think yeah I think I was naturally always inquisitive but I think however children naturally are aren't they um I think that um I went to boarding school and my my dad was a very busy chap working a lot and um uh I think that I was given a lot of sort of independence just get on with it make it happen and you know um I think that because of that that's driven me to just do things we did a lot of classes and you know after school activities and things and lots of running around and I think you can kind of be pushed to keep moving yourself forward from where you are and challenging yourself and you can get used to it and I think when I was younger going to boarding school is quite difficult when you're a kid initially so like wait a minute you know you might be kids are great at making friends it's like okay I'm in this whole yeah. new space and how, old, how old were you when you went uh, 10 10, Nine, okay. 10, yeah, or, or just that, that I thought, well, even is it, uh, yeah, that sort of age. And basically went, went there. And I think that you find your own a little bit when you're not in the dynamic of the family. And I think that helped. Um, um, but it's, but it's scary and hard at the beginning, right? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. However, uh, growing up, there were five of us. So you had to have a voice to be heard. Our dinners were pretty crazy. So I think even if it probably, you know, even if it's a, you, it isn't natural for you to start that way, I think you build up a voice if you need to be heard a little bit. But yeah, you're right. And I, I, I think that um, I think that that definitely helped doing lots of different classes and just, you know, yeah, I, I think there are a bit things in my childhood that have definitely helped shape me. Just looking to discover things and and pushing myself to do things I hadn't done. I did lots of violin and getting getting literally shoved up on stage and going there you go violin competition off you go and you'd be sitting there going ee, ee, ee. But actually, <laughs> the learning from these things is that you've been you're doing something you haven't done before out of your comfort zone and you're not particularly comfortable standing in front of people playing a violin or whatever it might be but I think that it it can help does help. it did it also give you that self-discipline so that yeah. needing to put the work in because you have yeah. such great work ethic yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think it. I think you could. It's definitely helpful to have habits built in so that you could continue to do the things you need to on a daily basis. Because not every day we wake up and we want to carry like have such an uber productive day. But I think if it's naturally in you a little bit to stick with it, even if you're like, oh, I kind of don't want to do that today, it does help. And you're right. The the thing behind the whole sort of, I suppose, with the violin playing, you have to do it. I mean, I I was brought up where we had to do twenty minutes reading and twenty minutes violin a day before we played. Um, slightly harsh, I think, to a degree. But actually, I think there are certain things that you can do as you grow up that can instill, like, go and get it done. 
it'll make you feel better afterwards. It's because it's not really the doing it. It's the, I've done something today and I feel really good about what I've done. I didn't want to do it to start with, but I've, I've done it and I've, you know, and, a sense and of then, achievement and a sense yeah. of reward. So you reward yourself after you've done the thing. Absolutely. And, I, and that's how I see things when I, when I speak to my son about it. Like, oh, this homework is so boring. And I, I kind of know it. And I'm like, you've already spoken about it. Said, it's not really that. It's the fact that you need to sit down. I want you to do it. And then when, you, when you've done it, you'll feel good about yourself. And you'll feel like, yeah, I've done what I need to do to be prepared for tomorrow. And, yeah. you know, so it's more of the learning, the process when you're younger, as in sticking to something, getting it done and feeling good after. And that sense of achievement. I, think you're right. I was, well, I was curious about how it's affected your parenting. Because it's interesting how like our history can affect uh, our, our parenting. Um, yeah. But also like, where were you in the pecking order of the five kids? Um, I was sort of, I think I'm, I was one from, not one from top, the second eldest. Second eldest. Okay. (laughs) Um, Did you feel that were there responsibilities associated with that as well? Well, I think, um, I, I think more from the fact that there was always so much to do to get us all out of the house that, you know, someone had to be doing things to get it organized or um, I had younger twin brothers. So it's sort of a case of, OK, right, wheel your brothers up the road for a walk with a dog and come back because we've got to then go and pick Joe blogs up. And, you know, so it's just getting involved and making things happen together. I think there was that. Yeah, interesting. OK, so you had those formative years that of you needing to have a voice and sort of find your that survivalist theme, whether it was at boarding school, the entrepreneurial vibe. And so then I'm curious about this theme around adversity uh, that we can often face, because I guess I'm really curious about successful people, right? And what was it? Did they need to have a catalyst point that sort of pushed them? Or was it just always habitual, the things that they did? So um, when we talk about the ideas of, of adversity, and you mentioned being being a mom, a single mom, like what comes up for you, the, the things that shaped you through your adult life as well? Um, I think for me, it's always excited me the um the sort of words like possibility spring into my head is always or the possibility of life the opportunities um sort of freedom and sort of the excitement of what could be so my driver if i'm never in if i'm not in that situation is to to find myself in that space again um okay. and what that means is you know say if i found myself you know, in, when you're first in your early years, when you're doing jobs, you're like, I can do this better. I can do more than this. It's that push to to find, you know, put yourself in the mindset and the, in the space where you you have created opportunities. You have you have choice. You you, you know, and and especially with the entrepreneurial spirit in me, that's definitely been a pull in that direction. And I think the you know when I look at where um, I've come, even with just having my son alongside me, um, which is both a driver and obviously you know, a reason to, to achieve and, and achieve more, whatever that means to, to, to people. But, you know, it's, it's definitely been a, a, a driver, a driver to me, um, having, having my son. And, and I think that creating, you know, making sure that it's creating opportunity for, for us and his future, which is a big driver. So, you know, uh, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, no, I get it. I have two kids myself. And there's definitely a different angle when you have kids, because not only about success, but who do I want to model to them? Like, how do I want them to uh, uh, respect me or or feel proud of me or um, see how you can achieve in this challenging sort of world? There, yeah. There's definitely um, a driver connected to that. Um, and so what were some of your first challenges in re- relation to starting a business so you're a single mom you've got you you get this great idea great you know um would you say that it was just an easy win or were there what were the things that you learned what were the challenges that showed up um well I think the challenges that showed up initially was okay I'm going to do this I now am the sole person who's bringing in my own income and I'm starting from literally zero so how am I going to do this um so there was definitely the challenges of the the pull between the responsibility of being a mom and creating an opportunity which is a bigger bigger than us and and something you know yeah. that, that I was going with so that the, there was definitely the okay I have a little pot to keep me going for this little this first couple of months um you know yeah just, 
been going during you that have time. to make it work right yeah making it work I mean I, I obviously didn't doubt my experience and my career which is what I was bringing to the table so there's no question in that but it's one thing having that but then going out and finding and making it happen is another thing entirely so I think initially it was sort of the that, okay, I've committed to this and I have this little child coming back every day. Hey, and I'm like, okay, am I doing the right thing? Or shall I just be going to get another nine to five? So I think definitely just the practical issues initially. So you, um, just, so you had moments of self-doubt? Well, I think at the beginning it was more of, am I being responsible by doing this? Oh, <laughs> Is this, is this the right reckless? Mistake? Is this reckless or am I, if I was going to do it at all, is it, is it now? Because then I'll need to make it happen and then we can settle into this. So, so there's the initial, I think really the battle initially was myself and is, you know, I'm a very logical person. So I said, like, okay, is this the right thing to do? If I did A, B and C, is this going to work? And, and so that was the first part. And then I think, um, I think, um, yeah, it's just, I think at times it's, it's, it's it, part of the challenge when you start, first start your own business or go out on your own in this particular area is, um, you know, what makes me the person that they're going to come to, to, to choose to work with and why am I, is what I'm saying any more important or better than the other people out there in that space and, and also it's a different hat entirely standing alone, standing tall. I am now doing this and I'm leading the show in this area. Whereas if you have many years working for other people and you're sort of, I don't know, not systemized, but you know, taught to sit a little bit institutionalized. Yeah. That's it. Yes. Um, you know, it can change, you can get used to behaving in that way. And suddenly it's almost like, okay, this feels very slightly different. Um, you know, I, I know I believe in myself. However, this just feels odd. Um, so there's definitely a space where you just have to keep going. Um, and, and that can be a little bit challenging. Cause there's a difference between like, I believe in myself in theory, and I know that I have successes or wins with other people's companies or helping them succeed. Right. And the difference yeah. between I now have to prove this shit, yeah. right. Yes, it is all down to me. And, yeah. and those moments, like, how close did you get to like getting a nine to five and like, did you start applying or like how yeah, close did you get? Well, no, I, I mean, I definitely had, I definitely had an open view with, with the timeline in terms of, I need to get this, uh, I need to get Bye. X amount of income by this point. And if it's not by this point, then yeah, I, I would definitely think that I do that. But then I also think that I'd reached the point by that point that didn't want to work with any for anyone else anymore because I think you when you know when it's your time to work for yourself when you start just being I don't know that I agree with this way or I, I think I can do this myself um, and you you no longer want to stick with stick with the status quo and your ideas far exceed anything that they are doing in what you want to bring to the table well, you with feel them. like you're playing small with other yeah. people you're like yeah. oh we could go so much further if we just yeah. did tried my way and you, and you need to find more of a voice than you're able to have there. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so, so, yeah, so that was the driver and that kept me, you know, obviously pushed me to, to do this through the, and I suppose, you know, the, the, the adversity side of things, I think really is in terms of some of the challenges that come that is, is really as well as for me, I drive myself very, um, I'm a very focused person. So I have very clear things that I want to do over a period of time and I'll make sure that I do them. Even if I think, Oh, not necessarily there yet in terms of do, is that what I want to do? Or is that how I, do I feel like I'm in that space to be this sort of uh, running my own company in the first few months. But I think that I just kept doing what I needed to do to drive it forward. And I remember thinking, I think it was after sort of six or seven months and I had a small team and I was standing at, before I knew it, we did have a number of clients and had a little small team of people who could bring a lot to the table and help drive some of the things that I was doing forwards. And I remember standing there and thinking and talking, but hearing my in my head, I was looking and these people sitting, sitting there nodding and I was talking, I was thinking, wow, these guys are really against what I'm talking about. Yeah. And I get to this point so quickly. And then I sort of re, you know, re, re engaged back into the room and carried on with what I was doing. But I think you can... Uh, you know, so that that is in, that's an you know you can get have points where you get quite inspired by how you're managing to keep yourself going, which which is yeah, yeah. So those are the high points. Like I've had a couple of people find me and say, oh, I want to work with you, or can you hire me? And I haven't always been I haven't been in a position for for that sort of thing. But I've been like, oh, interesting. Like, it feels like a milestone. Like people are yeah, looking to definitely. me, or there's there's enough of visibility that they're they're sort of interested in working with me. Um, and so those are the moments of going, huh. 
look how far I've come or look how quickly I've gotten here. Yeah. Um, but like, how did the stress affect you? Like, yeah. how did the like, fuck, you know, all of that, how did, obviously it yeah. affected you secretly, but did you have mentors or coaches or like, how was that showing up? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I did have, um, I found, I did have a mentor actually that I found through, uh, sort of a, uh, a charity co-working space that I, I used at the beginning for a month and it didn't, it wasn't quite the right um, area or fit for where I was at the time, but I connected with a lady there who then became my mentor. And I, yeah, I found that it was very useful. She was in a lot from an operations background and I found it incredibly useful to connect with her every, you know, every month and just have a chat. And actually to this day, she's since worked, been a client of ours and now is a friend. Oh, amazing. Um, I have since gone back to the same space there. And I'm now, um, which is launch 22. I, I'm now a mentor there for startups because I found it useful that I wanted so useful that I wanted to give back as well. Um, so yes, no, I, I, yeah, there's, that, that was, that was a very useful part of, of the journey actually. And just being able to sound things out with somebody else, I think. Completely. Uh, I guess, yeah. is, is there any downside to being as driven and focused as you are? I think yes, because I move forward faster than necessary. I've, I've morphed into yet. So, um, yeah, there are, there are downsides. I think there is because I think I, I moved very quickly. The business grew very quickly. And there was a point where, um, I think, gosh, we had sort of 15 odd clients, uh, at the time and then sort of nine different people working on different projects split between all of them and I was managing all of the noise that comes from that and while we were all doing a fantastic job and delivering I remember thinking gosh you know as with any business you go through a period where you're something like I now need to I now need to make this realistically for me realistic for me to continue at this pace yeah exactly how do you sustain it without burnout yeah Yeah. so so I remember thinking okay I need to, to to put in some systems and processes to manage this to take the business to the next phase and actually that's very normal it's very normal to work push your business in the direction that you want to go and it starts to build up momentum and your time is then pulled into it and then you think okay this is now the business is going to the next stage what do i do need to do now to free my time up and and remain sane um, well that yes that's yes. the interesting bit is recognizing the transition time because there's this tricky middle bit, isn't there, yep. from working in the business and doing everything because it's just yep. you to working yep. on the business where Absolutely. you've got your people to do the thing, but you're actually coordinating, delegating, like all those things to help you yep. stay sane, right? Yes, yes. And I think you do need to stop and review. I do stop and review literally every six months and just say, okay, what is going really well right now? What isn't? I put, put loads of bits of paper in front of me, write down all the different areas of business and I just offload and I change the things that need to be changed so that it's con- I've continuously learned from what's happened and I, I make sure that that's ingrained within the business and the processes so that it helps me remember. So that and can, um, you, can you do that by yourself or do you feel like you need a, a backup person, whether it's a coach or a colleague or whatever? Well, I actually, I've actually... I actually find it quite good just to do it myself initially because it's some areas that not everyone sees behind the scenes or ways that I approach things myself. So it's a very open kind of session. But I think that we do have reviews every now and again as in what's working, what's not, how can we improve this, how can we make it better? Um, But I think to really deep dive, sometimes you have to ask yourself some questions. And so I think that that's something that I do with with myself every six months. And, you know, so, yeah, you're right. And it, I will be open. It has been, there have been times when it has been very stressful because I've had my hat on of, you know, driving a business forward in the day and then coming back and hat on of mum. So actually there's always some, a little sort of face on with a smile. And I think that there have, you know, I, I'll openly share. It has been times where I've, I've sort of, I don't think I've wound down for a number of weeks now. I don't know what that looks like anymore. I need to just have some time to stop and reflect. And I think, you know, but that's pretty normal, you know, in, when you're doing something. Of course. And so when, when you have that balance right, what are the things that you put in place that you sort of, they're non-negotiables, whether, whatever it might be. Can I, I know for me, I need to c- connect with good people. Yeah. I need to try and keep exercising, uh, you know, stuff like that, that yeah. just helps me remain. Like what, what are the things that you do when it, when you do achieve that balance? Yeah. Well, when I, when I achieve that balance, I, 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 I think it's, it's making sure that I have that time the, the, the time in my diary for work and then I have the split where it's clear time in my diary for my 
time with my son and the things that we, we need to do or just the headspace to stop and think before the day starts, I think is 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 helpful. It's having when I when I'm in that sort of a very focused, centered, calm space where I'm at sort of I can see over the trees rather than just trying to cut through them is when everything is really balanced and my week is ahead or my current diary or whatever it is, is, is very, these are the things I need to achieve today to drive the business forward. These are the things that I need to do to make sure that I've remembered all the one of the things my son is going to come home and tell me. And and I think getting that balance there and not wasting any time and unnecessarily and being pulled into the, I think, I think actually one of the good, the, the things that I find very useful is when, when you're not pulled into the whole tech world, the whole habit of doing, doing something for the sake of doing it. And that pulls you out of the place when you're really centered and everything's balanced because it's, it's very easy to be pulled into to doing emails. Like, like what? Oh, I see. Yeah. Doing emails or answering, looking at the phone. The reactive stuff. The reactive stuff. So I think when I'm at in that space where I'm, you know, uh, really focused and, and things are going really well is when I'm, I'm very focused on the task at hand. I'm very aware of what's, you know, I'm not being pulled from pull as a post and, um, you feel on top of things. Yeah, I feel on top of things. I think that's the same for everyone, actually. <laughs> yeah, and so the key things that I learned from our time together, uh, first of all, you you told me some equation about waking up at five o'clock and how many yeah. more hours I gain in the week. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, well, yes. you know? Um, and so, so that was amazing. And so I do it on a week on week off basis, just because of when I have my kids. So, and I loved how you were like, well, make it work for you, but consciously decide on how you're going to use your time. You know, don't just wake up and be like, oh, I'm going to react to my emails. And if this word of mouth comes thing comes in, then I'm going to do that. And, you know, yeah. now yeah. I kind of, um, look at my week and I color block, uh, my, my calendar in the same way that you suggested right down to travel. Cause you were yeah. like, Put, put in everything, put in everything. So my calendar is beautiful now. Um, but also that efficiency uh, around waking up on time. But I also, and then I, what I had to learn was giving myself permission on the days that I have my kids to stop at four or to yep. consciously decide on the times when, all right, I've put in my work. Now I give myself permission to be present somewhere else. Um, yeah. What are, so just for, for people listening who are um, entrepreneurial or who have a side hustle and are like, um, I don't have time. I I can all oh, that excuse just drives yeah. me crazy. I'm like, are you a parent? Uh, no. Okay, you have time. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, what are the things that work for you in order to um keep you efficient? Like, what advice would you give to somebody who's just starting out? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think that's it. And and what what's the the, the common theme with all of that is sort of time management and being yeah. in control of your time. Yeah. And I think that you know that. And, and being very clear on what you should be doing with your time and what you shouldn't. And also having the balance between driving an idea or a business or working, in, you, know, you know, doing a step part-time job or you doing it uni. And then also you time. So you've got that balance. You don't resent the, 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 the amount of focus you need in the other bits of time. So you're right. I think it's, it's really about, okay, so what do I need to do with my week that helps me do everything that I need to be doing? So say you're working your job and you, you're, you're starting a, quite often people are saying, okay, I want to start a business. I want to do something around my normal nine to five. And it's just being really very focused and finding clear bits of time in your day that you can use productively to drive yourself forward. And, and also, you know, understanding when at your, your best at what times of day. So some oh, people, I loved that, yeah. Yeah, you know, that, you know, some people are incredibly actually very, very productive and focused from quite early in the morning up until about lunchtime. And then the afternoon, it needs to be more creative and go with kind of the flow of things. And um, yeah, and, and so it's like how, you know, have, having a think about when you are actually at your most productive, whether you're, you're looking at your working week ahead and thinking, let me think about how I'm approaching things at the best time of day that I'm at my sharpest. What time of day should I be? And even the question, sorry, even the question, because I think before we even met, you were like, jot down how you spend your time like audit, like get real. And like, I'm like, I'm busy. And it's like, okay, great. What are you busy on? And even to, to putting that real talk onto reflecting on my schedule and going, oh, actually I waste time here. Or, and I yeah. thought because I had the anxiety and I yeah. felt always busy and stressed that all of my time was being used. But when you actually get like get perspective from someone else and like, actually, how do you justify or, or where, where is your time? And I'm like, God, there's massive gaps, or I'm actually hanging out with people that aren't good networking opportunities or things like that. 
And that, that's actually a great exercise, isn't it? And, and it really gives 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 one the because uh, we can see things that we want to see, and we don't see things we don't want to Completely. see. Completely. And so I think you're right. You know, um, alongside really understanding your most productive on point parts of the day or the week and then yeah you're right having a look at you know how do you actually spend your time you know this is quite because um i was saying earlier there's so many ways that you can be pulled around are you sitting at your laptop and every time an email comes looking at it yeah because how, you know and, and, and it's distracted very, from your focus right so is there a better way to to segment your time so you're really focused in the right areas you know could you check your emails morning lunch and afternoon and 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 in the middle of that there's this really focused, undisturbed time where you can actually drive some things forward that need to be done. Definitely. Absolutely. So making conscious decisions about your day and how you spend your time. Um, what's the yeah. what's the next phase for you? What's the big dream for Co Startup and Go? Or I don't know if you have side hustles beyond that, but what, what's the big yeah. dream? Interesting. Yeah. So I mean this year I'm 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 looking forward to obviously continuing with with Coastal Up and Go as it, as it is, and 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 working with some really exciting startups, and um, we're looking to potentially double in size by the end of the year, just because I think that that will be really exciting to grow, 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 grow the team even bigger. From my point of view, I'm actually because yeah, as I, as I said earlier, I think it's probably around. I mean, myself, probably around fifty six, fifty seven odd startups that I've worked with, and also I do the startup directional coaching directly with founders and CEOs. So I've got some wonderful learnings and strategies that I, I think are super, super useful. So I'm actually um, publishing a book in October. Are you? Yay. So, so um, I have the timeline of end of May to finish all the- What's the book? Work. What's the book about? Um, it's the lean ways of working. So it Amazing. is essentially about how to, you know, how do you get the very best out of yourself? How do you, all the things that, some of the things that we've discussed today, you know, it's not just about having an idea and taking it forward. It's like, how can I be, the very best version of myself and really nail what I need to do and what are the best best parts of my day and what are my strengths and weaknesses and how can I actually and how can I actually deliver this thing that I want to do around other things that are going on. So very much what we said today. So yeah, um, I'm very excited about that. I'm looking forward Exciting. to it. Yeah. So I mean that's quite a big part of this year, I think. So yeah, just and, and I just, you know, I love what I do and I I, I love um, meeting people and um, hearing about their startups and their journey. So just very much carrying on the same vein as. And I really as I want to celebrate that because as much as I'm in the mental health and well-being space, and people ask about balance, and I see the rough end of burnout and uh, mental health, you know, where, where people don't look after themselves. I also yeah. want to celebrate like hard work, loving what we do, being efficient. Like I'm sometimes in circles where I feel like I have to apologize a little bit and be like. Yeah, I woke yeah. up at five and I, I know I'm a bit neurotic, but actually I love it, you know, and and, yeah, and, I, yeah. I, and I think we're we're driven and I admire that about you. We're, we're driven, we're focused. We want to give our kids the opportunity at a good life. And that's cool. You just yeah. need to be connected, to be self-aware, right? About your own yeah. trigger points, your own danger signs and, and consciously decide on your time off as well as your time on. But that Absolutely. doesn't mean it's a one size fits all. Like I like working my ass off. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really exciting and it makes, you know, you know, it gives you that wonderful life balance and, and it's about owning it, owning everything that you are in all its glory. And you know what we, you know, where our strengths and weaknesses are and, and, and not giving yourself a hard time and just yeah. staying focused and enjoying what you're doing and, and the balance, you know, being with a parent, being a parent and, and being an entrepreneur is, is, you know, we're not always going to get the balance 50, 50. We're not, we're not, but it's about being the best that we can, as, as often as we can and really enjoying really enjoying the both and you can I think you can do both you can yeah. you can have a career and be focused and enjoy it and become the best version of yourself and be the mum and and for that very reason and that's a good thing because you are being I love all it. that you can yeah and so what what would you say to like your younger self so the 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 woman who was still in a nine-to-five was a little bit annoyed a little bit frustrated but you know, you've got a kid and you've got the, the, maybe the conversation in your head about like, fuck it, if I don't do it now, I'm never going to do it. And you, and you have that thing, like, what would you say to the woman who's like, got the entrepreneurial vibe, but is going, yeah. Oh, I've got to play it safe or I've have need to be sensible. Or I like, I don't know. What's that decision like? Oh, wow. That's it's hard for, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a nice way. I like that's challenged my thinking. Um, I, uh, I'd say, yeah, I, I, that's definitely stumped me ever so slightly. I think, I think what I would say is, you know, um, 
think bigger than where you're sitting at the minute. Think differently. Ask yourself some different kinds of questions and just do it. Take the actions and do the things that you need to do to put yourself in the position you want to be in. And and all of the, you know, everything else will, will, will follow. Com- you know, uh, confidence very much follows competence. So allow yourself to do what you need to do to drive yourself forward and, and the rest will follow. I love that. I, lo- I love that because it it applies not only to wanting to jack it in and build your own business, but it applies to someone who wants to move further in their own career. Uh, ask for that promotion, go into the job that really excites you rather than the one that you're limiting yourself in, right? It's yeah, put, yeah. put the work in, build your confidence through actually working on the thing. And I love what yeah. you said, think bigger, right? Yeah, just think ever so slightly bigger than you are or ask yourself a different question than you would normally do or answer differently. Just think, how, how, how am I answering things generally? Is it normally no or maybe not sure? Yeah, like, yeah. Okay. you've I'll got habits, yeah. right, about how yeah. we respond. Um, yeah. Think bigger. Um, I think that's the perfect place to end. It's just like st- stretch yourself, think bigger. Thank you so much for all the help that you've given me uh, w- with, uh, with the work that we've done. Um, and I know this is going to be useful. It's just like put, put the work in and you get the result. You're an inspiration. Thank you. Thank you. Nice speaking with you. Thank you.